this is Damadoc82, and uh, we are in the From the Depths Designer for Ashes of the Empire today, because uh, I want to teach you guys how to uh, do a little bit of tank building here. So, in this episode, I'm just going to uh, talk to you guys about how to set up movement and steering and control. Um, and uh, we'll uh, go on to more uh, uh, other uh, parts. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about armoring and uh, turret making and so on and so forth later on. Um, just a heads up, this is, is going to be in 2.4.9. Um, but uh, a lot of these principles should you know, work in current stage as well, except for maybe when we go to uh, put in weapons. Because uh, a lot of the weapons have had uh, prices and all kinds of values changed them and things like that. So, yeah. Anyway, so first off, we want to uh, decide on what kind of material that we want to build the base of the tank out of. Um, it really depends on what you are going to go up against. Early game, you could probably get away with metal. Um... Metal is usually pretty good as a base, uh, except when you come up against uh, large explosive weapons like cram cannons, um, just a cram cannon landing right next to the tank will basically blow out the bottom of the tank. So, yeah. Um, so, with that said, I usually like to go with a heavy armor bottom. Um, and uh, there's another good reason for wanting to use heavy armor, and the reason is is that uh, it gives your tank a lot of stability because it keeps all the way at the bottom of, of the tank, so that way it, it won't lean like almost at all. So yeah, this is probably the best material for building the bottom of a tank out of, and it is very explosive resistant. So we're going to go ahead and pick that. Now I don't really have a set size that I go with. I just kind of go with what looks good and just go from there. Usually something about this wide. And something about that long ought to do it. And we can just get rid of that wood block there that we started off with. Alright, so we got the base of the tank down. Now we are going to add on the wheels. And we're not going to need any steering wheels or anything like this. Uh, the tank that we're going to be building is uh, going to have Damo Doc's version of tank steering, which in my experience has been extremely effective. Now the reason why I am doubling up on the wheels down here is uh, it's just to give them a bit more redundancy because wheels get blown off extremely easily. Also it'll uh, give the tank a little more extra speed. And the best thing all about wheels is um, they don't really need a whole hell of a lot of power. So yeah, great stuff. Um, Okay, so now we are going to need to set up the uh, the wheels for our tank steering. So, we don't need to worry about this crap right here. Don't even bother with that. The way this is going to work is uh, it's going to be controlled by ACBs. It won't even need a movement card. Now, the way this tank is going to perform is it's going to point directly at its enemy and it's going to maintain a certain distance using ACBs. This will... Uh, if you build it right, it'll keep all the heaviest armor at the front facing towards the enemy where it's going to take the most damage, which is exactly what you want. Alright, so let's go into wheel configuration. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, here's where we want to go. Okay, so then for tank steering, we go, to, just to keep it simple, I'm going to go with the direction keys. So uh, here we are going to go left. We want that to be negative. 
right, we want that to be positive. And forward and down, up is going to be positive, down is going to be negative. The red uh, is going to tell you uh, which way is going to get uh, negative propulsion, which means it's going to go backwards. Just green is going to be positive propulsion, which means it's going to go forwards. So a tank steering, you want the... Uh, the direction that it's going to be going in, you want that to go in reverse, oddly enough. And no, the the uh, the wheels on the other side, they're uh, going to uh, give you positive thrust to push you around that turn. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, we're going to spread to similar touching components. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to here. And we're going to spread to touching similar components again. Alright, now that's done. Now, usually you want to put your control block somewhere safe in this type of build. Usually towards the back is a pretty good option. So we're going to go control, grab ACBs. We're only going to need like four of them. Uh, I usually go with six if there's shielding involved, but for our purposes right now, we're just going to go with four. All right. So... We are going to need to set up these ACBs. Now, we want to go with the uh, the bearing setting right here. We'll go ahead and select that. Now, the positive numbers they go to the right when it goes to when it comes to bearing, and the negative numbers they go to the left. So. First, we're going to do the left bearing, and we want the minimum value to be negative 180. I don't know why that's not changing. There we go. And we want this to be negative five probably be pretty good uh, you could actually depending on what kind of build you're wanting uh, if you want something that uh, that works like a tank destroyer you want to keep this value pretty small uh, if you have uh, like a uh, a spinal mounted weapon which is a weapon that's directly mounted to the tank and not the, uh, not a turret uh, you want to keep you know, this value right here pretty small so that is going to to uh well this is how we're going to steer the tank so then we go into here under target and action we are going to look for complex controls and we want this uh, to use the actually it, that doesn't even matter yeah uh we want this to use the left key okay and then we go over here to this one and we set it up the complete opposite so we go into condition and we go to target bearing and we set the minimum or the maximum value to 100 I'm sorry. There we go. 180. And the minimum value to... Actually, I might have the steering buttons reversed, but we'll, we'll test that out here in a little bit. We want the minimum value set to... I think 5 degrees? Yeah. Yeah. 
Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably do have those reversed. That's okay, I can fix that. Okay, so... Go into complex controls. This one should actually be the left one, I believe. And this one should be the right. And then over here, we are going to need to do enemy range. Now in ashes, about maybe five to 800 meters probably do you just fine. So we're gonna leave this minimum value at zero. We're gonna set this to 500. For some reason, the keyboard options are not working for me today. Let's try that. There we go. All right. Now, whenever the enemy is going to be within 500 meters, we want this thing to back up. So we go over here to target an action. We go to complex controls and we want this to activate down and we're going to copy these settings and put them into the other ACB paste now we want this to be inverted on the other one if the distance of the enemy targeted on channel 1 is not between 0 and 500 meters, then we go over here and we want it up. Actually, another way you could do this is you wouldn't even have to invert it, is you could set this up for 500 and set this up to 5000. If the distance of the enemy targeted on channel 1 is between 500 and inf inf infinity, which is 5,000 meters. This is probably a better setup to go with, otherwise if there's like no tank on the field, this thing's going to just keep driving forward constantly. Alright, so now we're going to give this thing a little bit of power. I think I'm just going to slap in a really simple fuel engine for right now. Nothing crazy. This is just mainly for testing purposes. Let's see here. Fuel engines. Now, great thing about wheels is um, they give you a lot of thrust versus how much power that they take and that makes them extremely efficient this thing will be booking it trust me all right so now we need just for testing this gonna need, need a chair and going to need a vehicle well no actually we're gonna need a complex controller for this uh, control complex controller there we go. And we're going to need us a little bit of fuel. Alright. And I just dropped to the ground like that. And I am now pressing the left mouse button. And as you can see, it is turning to the left. Now, when I press the right one, it turns to the right. Very nice. All right, so we have our controls. Now, um, I'm just gonna put a bit of an AI. This is just for testing. This is not gonna be here permanently whatsoever. We are going to give this thing some really basic detection.
And yeah, this thing's gonna bounce around a lot, but it doesn't really bother me that much. Anyway. Uh, the engine and no, the uh, AI stuff, that's not going to be permanent. This is just a test out of uh, everything, make sure it's working correctly. Anyway, so now we're going to just spawn in something. Uh, small house. Make sure it sees it. Okay. Okay, guys, sorry for the cut there. Um, I had to do a little troubleshooting to figure out what I had done wrong. All right, so um, the reason why I wasn't moving is because there wasn't a weapon. I know, it, it's weird. But, um,. Yeah, I just like stuck this little uh, itty bitty 50 cal on it uh, to uh, get it working correctly. And uh, it started behaving like I want to. Now, uh, just to let you guys know, I had to, um, as you can see, it's just going to sit there and move forward and backward trying to stay within that 500 meters. Which is great because that means your tank is going to keep moving constantly. Uh, something I should note to you guys real quick is I fudged when I was telling you how to do the uh, the ones that are going to control the steering left and right. Uh, this all here was correct, but I had it uh, uh, bound to the wrong key. This one actually should have been left, and this one over here should have been right. So let me just show you guys the settings so uh, you'll see exactly how it should be set up. But yeah, the, the tank will uh, not turn towards its target at all unless you have uh, your detection set up and you have at least some kind of weapon mounted to it. Now before I stop uh, the video here, I just want to give you guys a demonstration of uh, this thing in action. As you can see, uh, we have a Taipan chasing us. Now, of course, normally the Taipan would be shooting at us, but I yeah, I turned that off just so I can demonstrate this. Uh, but as you can see, the tank is doing its best to keep distance, and it is keeping the front facing towards the enemy. And it's just going to keep doing that till either the target's dead or the tank itself dies. Or, of course, the ACBs get taken out. So uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick demonstration to show you, you know, how it was working. Actually, let's uh, get rid of that Taipan there. And uh, let's spawn in another vehicle. Uh just be another Taipan I guess make sure that its weapons turned off and as you can see the tank is rolling towards its target now And now it's going to try to maintain distance again. So let's um, get rid of that one. And I'm just going to spawn an enemy like over here to the side. Uh, we'll just use one of mine. We'll just turn that off. Now this is probably going to hit our tank. Yeah. Um, Oops. Anyway, 
let's just get this repaired real quick and as you can see the chassis wouldn't turn directly towards its target and it's going to go to its correct distance and then it's going to maintain distance so yeah pretty cool huh So now that I've shown you guys how to uh, build these things, um, well, at least uh, get the controls down, uh, we'll continue uh, doing the armoring and uh, weapons in another part, but uh, for now, I just wanted to show you guys how to do the controls. Anyway, this has been Damodoc82. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hope you guys got something useful out of this, and uh, keep your hammer high. Later.